I was shocked. I, I don't think I understood in a very long time. I mean, I understood, but I didn't really understand. It was, it's so hard to comprehend that you feel very healthy. I wasn't feeling sick at all. And then they tell you you have this deadly disease. And I was like, what? Uh, what? <laughs> Maria was diagnosed with breast cancer this summer. Today she has an important MR scan. The results will tell if the doctors need to remove her breast or not. She will find out in a few weeks. Actually, I'm very positive thinking and I, I have a feeling that they've shrunk a lot because I can't feel the uh, tumors anymore. I have two tumors. In March 2019, Maria Winberg felt something unusual in her breast and was worried. So she went to see her doctor. The doctor there said, uh, I'm very concerned about you have two uh, lumps in your breast. So he took three biopsies. And um, then the 11th of July, I got the answer. It was cancer. So that's where how it started. Then everything went quickly. Maria got a plan with all her treatments. She has had 10 series of chemotherapies so far. Now she's almost done. So when there is four chemos left, I bought these advent calendar lights because I wanted to count down. And uh, usually you, you burn one, two, three, four, and then it's Christmas. But I'm doing four, three, two, one, because there's only two chemos left. Now it's just a joy burning them now, down. <laughs> um, yeah, celebrating, trying to celebrate every day. Today, Maria can light another candle. She's on the way to the hospital for her next chemo. Luckily, the first, more severe chemotherapies are over. This one does not affect Maria as much as the first ones. Unfortunately, our team wasn't allowed to accompany her during this treatment. It's just, I dread it a little bit because I get a little bit nauseous, nauseous just from getting going here to the hospital uh, because my body remembers the first chemo. But it's not as bad anymore, but um, it's, it's just not fun being here. I just want, I don't want to go here anymore. I just want it to be over with. I have two left after this one today. And I am gonna celebrate and I can't wait for December, for Christmas. I'm just gonna have the best time ever just doing Christmassy stuff. And uh, I can't wait for it all to be over. Maria had to quit her job because of her diagnosis. Just like her, many other Danes are suffering from cancer. In Denmark, one in three people get diagnosed with cancer. There were almost 20,000 new cases of cancer in Denmark in 2018. Of these cases, 5,000 were breast cancer. That makes breast cancer the most frequent type among women. Most women are diagnosed between 50 and 70 years of age. Maria was younger than that when she found out. Her boyfriend Klaus helped her cope with the new situation. I don't know how I would have come through this or done this without Klaus and Albert and Viga, his kids, because it's been, it's been hard. I mean, uh, not feeling good. And if I was at alone, I don't think, I don't think I could do it. I would have to move home with my mom and that would not work out. <laughs> <laughs> Klaus is always by Maria's side even though her life has changed a lot after the diagnosis. I mean, I try to help her the best I can, but it's just, you know, about being here, I, I think, and uh, make it going in a way. It's just something we have to get through. So, um, yeah, it's not it's like I I've, I've need much help. No. It's not like I'm feeling that bad that I need someone to do stuff for me. 
uh, well, really after, after the first three chemos where you get sick, I, I did need help mm -hmm. because I was just in bed and I would not have had anything to eat if, it, if you didn't serve it for me. Mm -hmm. so. Now Maria manages to handle nearly everything herself. She tries to keep her mind busy, for example by cooking and meeting her friends. However, she also has bad days. Because I have so many stomach pains and I have diarrhea and I have nosebleeds and I have these sensation, nerve damage and I have headaches and I was just like, I can't do it anymore and they couldn't find my veins and I'm like, ugh, I just don't want to do it anymore. But it usually just lasts like a day. I call my mom or talk to Klaus or whatever, call a girlfriend and they're like, yeah, but Maria, and I know, I mean, I have to do this, I can't just stop it. So, but I have bad days, but it's not been that many, luckily. To cope with the side effects, Maria attends a workout class for cancer patients. Studies have shown that working out during chemotherapies reduces fatigue and increases general well-being. Staying fit isn't the only benefit Maria gains from the workout. Being around other cancer patients also helps her. Yeah, in the beginning I didn't think I actually needed to talk to anybody else because I wasn't sure I wanted to hear their stories because I was, um, I, I just thought it was so horrible, so many people were sick, but it, it really helps to talk to them and to share stories and have I mean, similar experiences and, oh, oh, you got that taste thing and we can help each other that way. Today they are talking about beauty tips. Maria wants to get false eyelashes because hers are falling out. The change of appearance during chemotherapy can be a challenge. For Maria, feeling feminine wasn't always easy. It definitely brings back uh, bad memories from when I was dark haired and had a centimeter long hair and um, had that bruise on my chin. That was, yeah, I really felt ugly. Maria decided quite quickly to cut her hair before it would have fallen out itself. Actually, Klaus was the one who shaved her head. It's just what happens when you get the chemo. And, yeah. and I mean, we know that. We, so it's just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just hair. Yeah. Maria was told that she might get tired of looking sick. That's why she decided to buy a wig. That's me just with a blonde wig. I thought as soon as I put it on, like, I'm a little boy looking like Tinkerbell. <laughs> I can't wear this. So, no, I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> Maria is still awaiting her breast surgery. There are two possibilities, either removing just the tumors or the whole breast. Right now, she can't imagine her body without her breast. I'm just glad that I'm in a relationship because that would be hard to go out and meet someone not having a breast. Uh, so yeah, I don't really know how I feel about that. Um, I guess I won't know until it's, it's gone and hopefully it won't have to be. A woman who has had her breast removed because of breast cancer is Lotte Seeheim. For her, feeling feminine has nothing to do with having only one breast. It never crossed my mind that I would be less of a woman. Um, not when I lost my hair, not when I was, uh, when they took away one of my breasts. Um, I did ask a lot of questions, uh, though. I was wondering, where do I sit? Do I, do I sit in my breast? Do I sit in my hair? Where's my um, 
feeling uh, or being a woman, where does it sit? Where does it live? And um, I never doubted that I was still a woman, even without my hair. I looked different. Oof, I looked a lot, very, very different. I never doubted that I was less of a woman with one breast. After her treatment, Lotte was left without products that would suit her new body. When I first had my surgery, I went to this place to get a bathing suit. I um, was um, presented with uh, three different bathing suits. One was a grandmother one model. The other one was grandmother two. And the last one was great, great granny. And I was just sitting there in the, in the, the room where you have privacy and I just started crying. It's like, I didn't get it. I mean, I, was that all there was for me? I was 41. After that, Lotte founded her own e-shop called Livia. She doesn't only sell swimsuits, but also other products suitable for cancer patients and survivors. A lot of the stuff that I saw, it really, I mean, from a mile ahead, you could just see it, it was screaming, chemo, cancer. And I was like, that doesn't work for me. I need something that just makes me look human. I like, like a woman who's just lost her hair for a while because that's, that's what it was. It wasn't for good, it was just right there. And it makes a difference that, um, that I'm a breast cancer survivor myself. I'm not just the, the one selling the stuff. I know what it feels. We're back with Maria in the hospital. She's having her last chemotherapy. For this special moment, her mother accompanies her. I'm just, yeah, relieved. I think I'm just going to be doing Christmas things the next couple of Tuesdays. Doing some Christmas shopping and, uh, yeah, hanging out, hopefully feeling good. <laughs> Now Maria will have to wait for the results of the MR scan from a few weeks ago. Yeah, that was not what I expected. Now that I've um, learned that they have to remove it all, I'm just looking at the positive. It's never going to come back. So actually, I'm a little relieved thinking about it, that it's going to be gone, totally gone. Ha, ha, ha.